Fried chicken sandwiches have been all the rave in the past year. I wanna show you how to put your own signature style and flavor into a chicken sandwich that you can call your own. And I promise you it'll be better than any fried chicken sandwich you're gonna find at a fast food restaurant. What I'm here to do today is teach you how to make something that is your own kind of signature and your own style. And to get you into the mindset of not necessarily copying other things, but trying to take the techniques that you learn and applying those flavors and ingredients that you love. And for me, I love Italian food. So today I'm gonna make this sort of fried chicken sandwich inspired by some of the best fried chicken makers out there. Sean Brock, the brothers who run Blue Ribbon Fried Chicken, which makes famous fried chicken here in New York. We're gonna take a little bit of inspiration from Southern Fried Chicken today, but we're gonna make it Northern Fried Chicken. We're gonna add a little bit of the flavors of the Italian palate, and we're gonna make something that is recognizable as a traditional fried chicken sandwich, but is packed with flavor, has a little bit of spice, has a little punch of acidity and vinegar, and it's gonna be delicious. So let's just jump right into it. So what I have here today is boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, some people don't like dark meat. Some people want white meat and that's fine. I've generally in the past have been a white meat guy only, but you have to understand if you can cook the dark meat to the right temperature, which is basically not to 165, you wanna go a little bit over that around 180, 190, 200 degrees, this becomes much more tender. And it also creates a more forgiving piece of meat so that we can kind of get a nice crust on the dredge in a deep fryer and not really dry out the meat in the middle like we might if making it with a chicken breast. You really have to nail it with a chicken breast. Thighs are more forgiving and they'll still end up tender. So this is all prepped. What we've done is I've just salted them, put them on a rack and let them chill in the refrigerator for four hours. That's gonna season them from within and that's gonna be all, all of the salt that we add until maybe the end when we sprinkle a little bit after frying. But these are ready to go. We just have to prepare the dredge for them. But before we do the dredge, I gotta get my oil hot. And so I found this kind of real old, I have no idea where it came from or whose it was, big deep cast iron. And this is like made for fried chicken, I feel like. So I'm gonna use this. I just need to add a little bit of oil to it. I'm using canola oil today, and no, I haven't really been advocating for using canola oil recently. I've tried, been trying other oils. It's quarantine conditions, so it's all that I got. So use whatever oil you can, whatever you like. Just make sure there's a high smoke point. Olive oil isn't really gonna work for this. And I just wanna fill this guy up no greater than halfway. Anything more than halfway, and you're gonna risk overflow of the oil. If you keep it, at or under halfway full of oil, you're gonna be in good shape so long as you just don't overcrowd the oil. Now I'm going to keep this bottle and then when I'm done with the oil, I'm gonna let it cool, I'm gonna strain it out, I'm gonna put it back into this bottle and I'm gonna reuse it for fried chicken maybe one or two times. There's no need to waste all this oil, it just kind of makes frying a little bit more reasonable if you know you don't have to just waste all this oil. So make sure you keep the bottle, and get this onto the stove on medium heat and just let this slowly come up to temperature. We're looking for 350 to 375. Now, like I said, we're gonna take flavors that I enjoy, but we're gonna use certain techniques. We're gonna mainly take them from Blue Ribbon Fried Chicken, which is a famous restaurant here in New York. If you've ever been here, you know, it's sort of a late night place. It's famous within chef circles and they just make really great fried chicken. And they do a few tricks. We're gonna take inspiration from that. First things first is, I got the name Northern from Blue Ribbon because that's how they sort of distinguish their fried chicken. It's not buttermilk brined. They are using something interesting, which is egg whites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack egg whites in here and I'm gonna reserve the egg yolks. 
And what I like about this method is that it gives you a reason to use the whites after you make a dish like carbonara, which only call for the yolks. What the proteins in the egg whites are gonna do is sort of create a, a stronger bond to the dredge. And I've done it before and it works great. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna go egg whites into this bowl and we're gonna save the egg yolks into this little half quart container. So I'm gonna save these yolks, they go to carbonara, and then I wanna beat the egg whites a little bit just to kind of get them to behave a little better and coat the chicken easier. So now we have the egg whites, they're like beaten slightly. We're not like beating them into stiff peaks. We're just kind of foaming them a little bit and just loosens them up, allows it to coat the chicken easier. So we'll put that off to the side. Now I have this Pyrex plate that I'm gonna dredge my chicken in. So it's gonna start with about a cup and a half of flour, all-purpose flour. You can do a cup of all-purpose flour and a half cup of cornstarch. You could do a half cup of cornmeal. You can sort of use whatever you want, make it your own. Another trick that Blue Ribbon uses is a mix of all-purpose flour. And since they're of Jewish descent, they use matzah, ground matzah meal and they mix it together and that's their little trick. So what I'm gonna do is take a little inspiration from that and instead of using matzo meal, I'm gonna use some of my breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna basically just toss the all-purpose flour in here and my breadcrumbs, and then I'm gonna mix it all together. The breadcrumbs are just gonna kinda help give it a little bit more crisp, give it a little bit something extra. And then I'm gonna season mine, because I love the flavor of the seasoning. With a buttermilk brine, you're really creating flavor inside the chicken, and since we're not doing anything like that, we're relying on the crust to sort of create seasoning. So I'm gonna add this into the flour. This is just some paprika, some cayenne, some granulated onion, granulated garlic, and some fresh ground black pepper. Full ingredients and all the exact amounts are gonna be in the recipe link down in the description. So, so go check that out when the recipe is done. We're just gonna add this into the flour, give it a mix. So now we've got our egg whites. We're gonna dip it into the egg whites, then into the dredge. We're gonna make sure that dredge is all coated in there, and then we're ready to fry. Now as you're working that breading in, don't be afraid to get rough with it because we want some craggly edges. That's where all the crispy bits come from. So just make sure you work as much of the flour into the chicken as you can. So these guys are ready, our oil is hot. Let's go fry them. We're gonna use a thermometer to make sure they're perfect. Shouldn't take more than five or 10 minutes to cook these. Let's just drop them in the oil. So we're frying at 375, so I'm a little hot right now, but that's okay because the key here is gonna be heat management. As we drop chicken in, the temperature of the oil is gonna drop. So we're gonna to have to manage the heat in order to get it back up and then to make sure it doesn't drop back down again. So just try to maintain that heat range of 350 to 375 and then cook these guys until they reach about 180, 190, 200 degrees internal temperature. That range is the forgiving range for cooking this chicken. We only add two pieces of chicken at a time to make sure that the oil temperature doesn't drop too drastically. These look and smell great. Mm, yeah, okay. Really quickly, we gotta make something. We're gonna go with about a half cup of mayo. Now this starts to be where this Italian flavor and flair comes in. I'm gonna use the trusty old Calabrian chilies. Now I wanna take these stems off. And then get all these seeds out of there and just split them open and then scrape the seeds out with the knife. It's okay if a few are left over. So I just stack 
these like sliced open chilies and then just really mince them. Process them as finely as you can. And then take a little bit of that pickle liquid or vinegary brine and then mix it all together. Mm. That brings so much. That does what a pickle does. A pickle brings that acidity and cuts the fat. Spiciness, it brings the spiciness. It has everything you need in this one sauce. You know, you could throw pickles in if you want. I even think this would be good if you mix the coleslaw into this with this. So there's so many ways you could take this. This is like version 1.0, but we're gonna go with it. I've been keeping some buns in the refrigerator so they stay nice and fresh. I'm gonna pop this in the toaster and get a nice toast on them. And then we're ready to assemble our sandwich. Still juicy. I know a lot of people are gonna say I don't like mayo. And again, I told you I didn't like mayo either. But mayo is a vehicle, and it's a beautiful vehicle for Calabrian chilies. This is perfect. The chicken is both juicy and tender, and it's a thigh. That's not dry chicken. However, it shreds apart really easily. That's what you want out of chicken thighs. They performed the way I wanted them. That egg really adheres to the flour, so that, that crust ain't coming off. It's really delicious. There's no point in even comparing this to fast food. It's just in a different level. It's simple, but executed well, and the flavors are there. And this is mine, right? This is my sandwich, this Northern Calabrian Chili Spicy Fried Chicken Sandwich. I'm gonna evolve it, maybe add some cabbage, some slaw on it with the spiciness. That's it, but this is how you make your own. Maybe you're Korean and add some spicy chili sauce to it. If you want Mexican flavors, you can apply Mexican flavors. Whatever f tastes you like, you can sort of learn to work into recipes to make them your own. And that's what I did here today. To deal with that oil, all you gotta do is just wait for it to completely cool down, pour it through some sort of filter or strainer, get all of that fried chicken bits out of there, and then just pour it back into the container that it was in, and you're ready to reuse this oil whenever you want a fried chicken again. It's just too good to be true. I'm gonna need to make another sandwich. Make sure you make that Calabrian chili mayo because that is straight fire. You need to be putting it on everything. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Thanks so much for my patrons scrolling up on the screen. Appreciate you all. If you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description and on the screen right here. All the information is below. I think I'm gonna start doing some like Zoom cooking classes and stuff like that. So let me know what you think. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.